been a, about a week since I sewed anything, and I thought I would take advantage of a quiet day to get started on a new project. So this time, it is a dress. We are going to be doing this version of this Simplicity pattern. Here it is, Simplicity 9325. I picked this out because I like, come on, focus. I like the sleeves. If Those look like something that aren't going to bind on you because they're nice and full. I like that it has a smaller waist because that's my one redeeming feature here. But I have plenty of room for my hips. So I like that. And I think it'll be pretty. I bought some 100% linen on the clearance table. And I pre-washed it. And so um, I think it'll be nice for summer. So you might know from a previous video that usually in a pattern, I'm in between sizes. So like my waist is usually like a size 14 and my chest and hips are usually a size 16. So a lot of times it's a very fitted thing. I, I adjust my pattern accordingly. I decided just to cut this entire thing out of a 16 because the way that it's designed, um, the front, you know, the front, this is the front bodice piece and this is the front midriff piece. <clears throat> and this is going to get gathered up in here. Okay. So, but the back is completely open and very wide. And there's a, a tie that's going to cinch it in in the back. So if I feel like my waist is a little bit loose because I'm cutting a size larger for it, um, just by tying my little bow in the back a little bit tighter, it's going to make up for that. And I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of room up top, that I had plenty of sleeve and everything. So I thought that was just easier. So <clears throat> the pieces are pretty large and big. It's basically an entire back. The top is divided into the bodice, the midriff, and the skirt. There's a tie, a couple facings, and a sleeve. And so this shouldn't be a big problem. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. My fabric, you know, it's the same on both sides. <coughs> and there's no patterns, no nap, none of that stuff. So I can cut it out however I want to. <coughs> okay, I want to show you that the original cut edge was a little bit wonky and so at first I thought I wasn't going to be able to tear it but I did. It takes a lot more force on linen but I did and um, so now I'm able to line up this edge and that's one thing if you're using woven especially a nice one you really want to make sure that your straight is perfect to start with otherwise even though you have a beautiful fabric it might not hang right and that kind of defeats the purpose. So it's been a few days since I have recorded anything. It was a very busy weekend. My daughter came down. We went to that baby shower and we had this crazy freak snowstorm. So that morning when we woke up, there was 10 inches of fresh snow on the ground. So that was fun. And in the middle of it all, I decided, hey, I'm going to rearrange and try to organize my sewing room. So that means that you pull everything off of everywhere throw up some bins and try to organize it. So I've been the last two days trying to downplay the chaos that I collected and created. And now I think I'm about done to clear off my table totally and get back to work on that dress because I really want to get it put together. So at this point, I've got it cut out um, and I just need to start surging edges and assembling. So we're going to take it step by step, but first I'm going to finish cleaning off my table. All right, so it's getting started here. The first thing we're going to tackle is this number one piece. And what they want us to do is stay, stat, stay stitch this part here to this dot. Um, and then they want us to gather down here between the two notches. So what I'm going to do before I do any of that is mark my dots, clip my notches, and the way I cut my dots is I have a piece of um, upholstery leather from an old piece of furniture that I cut up. And I have this little thing. 
it's actually for leather work and you just push down and it cuts a hole and so that way I actually punch a nice neat little hole in my pattern so that I can come back and mark it now I'm using navy blue which is a very dark fabric so I'm going to see if I can get one of my white pens to work on it and like I said these pens are um, the kind that disappear when uh, you iron it and since this is linen I will be ironing it so yeah it comes through great and how I mark my notches is I just clip into them and I don't go all the way to the printed point I go just under but it cuts just a little slash in the fabric um, you can see it's just enough that when you're looking for it you can find it but it's not obvious okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the machine it's asking to stay stitched down here what what I like to do um, because it's just me instead of stay stitching I apply a fusible stay tape I buy this stuff you know they're not telling me to do this I just found it and I like it I buy this stuff actually off of their website so if you look there it is you don't have to you can you can stay stitch it um, they have it in natural color and in black and I got a brand new roll of black here and what this is it is woven so it doesn't stretch but it's got a fusible side so I can just put this on here and iron it on and for me that works better because sometimes for me at least when I'm stay stitching sometimes I stretch it as I stay stitch which defeats the purpose and and the le less I can handle it um, before it's reinforced the better so the first thing get the cat hair off because we love her but man does she shed and I just decided that it's not worth it trying to chase her out of the sewing room because she's cute you know I enjoy her I didn't choose her one of my daughters chose her for my other daughter as a gift and now neither one of them live here they're both grown up and gone and their cat remains so there you go all right so these are my two front pieces and my iron set too high so here I am I'm pressing the one down put this on and press this one down and that's just going to keep it from losing its shape because you don't want your front to get gappy you know you want it to stay a nice shape a nice firm shape so can you see how it's just applied on there it's enough to keep it because this is at this point this is a bias so it's going to want to stretch and this just keeps it in shape so I think I got it all adjusted the only thread I have in the house that would kind of match this is a spool of my serger thread so it's not the strongest in the world but I think it's going to be fine so what I am do is I'm gonna run um, two long uh, basting type stitches for my gathering and please work between the two notches so I do the first one with the edge of my presser foot against the edge of the fabric so it's about a quarter inch in and then the next one I come and I do it so that I am just a little bit further away from the edge than the first one about an eighth of an inch in and by doing it this way both of those sets of stitches should not show if all goes well because it should put the, the second row of stitches at you know close to three-eighths of an inch 
Okay, with that done, we're going to be working on this piece. Honestly, I am not going to punch out these two circles because all they're doing is marking where the uh, fabric is going to be meeting up and it's kind of a self-explanatory type. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the little notches and what it asks is to sew across the top at 5 8 I mean, press it open and then understitch it. And understitching will make it so that it lays nice and the uh, seam will curve in so you don't have a real uh, ugly top seam when you're wearing it because this is going to be front and center here. So I have it sewn and I'm going to press the uh, whole thing towards one side. Actually, I'm going to press it open first just to get it nice and flat. And then I'll bring the second piece over. Again, that's what works for me. So, what understitching is, it's a nice step. Don't skip this step. It's easy to do and it makes such a difference in the way a garment looks. Okay, so this side here, okay, this side here has my seam allowance pressed to it. All right, so on looking at it and I watch it from the correct side, I'm going to be doing a stitch just on that side. So here's my seam allowance just along this edge, just this side of my other seam. And that's going to make it fold so nice. So I'll show you what it looks like. There you go. So now you can see my um, understitching seam right here, right along the edge. Oh, I want it to focus there. So what that does is then when I fold it like this, it's going to naturally want to roll more so that the seam side is inside. It's, un it's not shown. So from the outside, you just see a nice rolled edge. Okay, this piece is done. I've gone ahead and basted it around the other three edges, like the directions say. I will be uh, serging around these edges, but I'm going to be sewing this piece on first, so that way I will have one serged seam to go up each side. So, with that, the next step we have is to put these two together. And that's where that center, that dot is, that we started the stay stitching or stay tape at. So that's how that's going to match up. So with the right side of your fabric, and the right side meaning the side that does not have the understitching on it, I'm just going to pin those on and do a 5 8 inch seam down there on both sides. Before I serge this, I want to show you how it looks. So these are sewn together, and I'm going to come back and just serge straight down all the way to the shoulders and then go around the whole thing. But I wanted to point something out to you. I watch a lot of sewing videos myself and a lot of times you'll have the the presenters who are fabulous presenters but they've got these super high-end machines. You know the or five or six versions of a super high-end machine and it can be a little intimidating because um, I'm not going to go out and spend $800 on a serger. I'm just not. I want to show you this. This is a Singer Merit Lock. I bought it used at a flea market about six years ago for 60 bucks. Fabulous little machine. It does well. You see this? 1949 Meister. Fabulous machine. Do they have all the computerized bells and whistles? No, but they do everything you need and really well. So I'm just saying you don't need the high end. What you need is something basic that's functional, that's reliable, that you can use. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Here we go. Now, if you are surging, when you get close to your corner, get your needle up to right about where the corner is and raise it. All right. Lift up your presser foot. Let's see if I can get this over here more. Lift up the presser foot. 
turn your fabric, put the first fabric back down, and keep going. That way you don't have to mess with a whole bunch of tails and everything. So again, I lifted up my needle, lift up my presser foot, turn the fabric, and then put it down. So that your corners are nice and square, and you don't have a bunch of tails hanging out. And what it wants you to do, I did not serge the bottom edge because I didn't want to risk catching my gathering stitches, which we haven't messed with yet. Uh, once I sew that onto the skirt piece, then I'll serge it. But anyway, it wants you to press the little front inset part towards the bodice piece, but just this part. It doesn't want you to go up and press the rest of the dress because I think that's when we sew the facing. Oof steam. The next step is pretty easy. It just again wants you to do a mm -hmm, there you go. stay stitch type thing down the center back which is at an angle. Again I'm going to use my tape. You can stitch it that's fine. And then you take both center back pieces match them up sew down. When I do that I am going to be surging back up and around. Okay so my back piece is sewed together I've surged around the edges but not the neckline and that's because there's going to be a facing sewn on there so it's not really that necessary and I don't want to add any extra bulk. So at this point I'm going to match up the shoulder seams and sew those and press them open. All right, we're at the stage where I need to go ahead and apply my fusible interfacing to all of these pieces. So we have two facing fronts, two facing backs, and one midriff piece, which is a waist type piece. And so I will be putting, um, just fusing them on. The, the midriff piece, there's two pieces of fabric. You only put it on one, kind of like a cuff. I know that you probably know how to do this, but I'm going to show you the way that I put on fusible interfacing. First, I iron my fabric, my main piece of fabric, just to make sure it is completely flat. And I use a hot steam iron, making sure you have the fusy, bumpy side. Place it on and then mold the fabric to it because you're interfacing, it's going to be more of the accurate shape. Your fabric is going to get kind of loose. So once I get it pretty lined up, then I start in the middle and I just press. I don't iron back and forth. I just kind of press. It's going to press those little dots down because I find if I try to push it back and forth and iron it back and forth, sometimes I, I kind of mangle and stretch the interfacing piece itself which defeats the purpose of it holding its shape. So I have it just pressed on there. Then I flip it over and I'm going to iron it on the fabric side just to make sure there's no bumps or any places where it's not fused on. And of course this is using a linen when you can use a very hot steam iron. If you're doing something it's going to melt easily. Yeah, use your best judgment. Anyway, I don't worry too much about it peeking over the edges because I usually end up overcasting it or it's hidden inside of a fold or I surge it or something. So I'm not too worried about that. But when we're putting together a facing, I usually put my markings on after I've fused everything. That way it's all in the right spot. But on the center front, there's a dot. You're only going to sew from that dot down, leave from that dot open. So just to make sure I remember, I'm sticking a pin straight through that dot. So I remember that. But <coughs> so say here is my one of my back pieces. Um, the outside of the curve is the curve is the part that's going to go on the um, it's going to be the sewed part. So I'm marking my scent, my little dot here. 
And I'm going to do all of this. Put it this way. I'm going to do all of this on the facing side, on the interfacing side, because it's easier to see. Okay, so I have my neck facing also together, pressed open at the seam allowances. And it's telling you to go ahead and finish the outside edge. I want to show you something a little unusual about when you're pinning the facing on. So this is the front, <coughs> and this is that little center piece that's sewn on. So what you have to do is, like I'll show you with this one, basically flatten it out and you're going to put your facing here so that your, your machine sewing your facing over. If you turn it so that you're looking at the, uh, this, this view, it'll make more sense. So say where the dot is on your facing, it should be matching up to where the top part <coughs> Excuse me, the way your top part is of that little center part. Okay, so this is all flat. And you just keep bringing the facing down and match it to the bottom and then machine stitch all at 5 eighths inch all the way up through that dot and all the way to the center back and then do the other side. Um, I'm going to be following my 5 eighths inch mark. Making sure to keep my shoulder seam allowances pressed open. Okay, so there's my dot. That's where my little uh, center part is. Right there. <clears throat> now I'm going to go back and forth a couple times just to make sure I get it. Now, just double checking to make sure everything is nice and flat in here. it on. You can see that with my facing on there, it's still a nice smooth stitch. So that's good. Just like we did the under stitching here, it also calls for basically flattening this out. The seam allowance up against the facing is where you're going to stitch. So I'm starting at the center back and under stitching so I'm pulling the um, seam allowance towards the facing you can't really tell but I'm running my stitching line uh, equal with this outside or inside edge part there as my guide so that my under stitching is trying to make it fairly consistent you have to be careful and kind of tug your facing out as you go Katie? Hey, Katie. That's Katie Bug. Isn't she cute? She's so cute. Oh, my little friend. Okay, <clears throat> so I've got this. Uh, it's been understitched. I haven't pressed it yet, but you can see how it's going to hold the shape of the neckline pretty darn well now. What we have to do is press it, but also over here, where the shoulder seams are, go ahead and after it's pressed, just put a couple stitches into the seam allowance here to hold it, just to make sure it doesn't go flipping out. Now the pattern didn't call for it, but I am also stitching down that center back point to the seam allowance, just because that's a place where you won't be able to see when you put it on, since it's in the center back. So you could be walking around with your facing pooched out, you'd never know. So just a couple stitches to hold that onto the seam allowance back there, just to be safe, can't hurt. And that part is done. So now moving on to the directions, we are down here in step 11 already. And it says pin the midriff to lower edge of front matching center. So this is the point where we're gonna go ahead and start gathering that bottom front. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and overlock the edges of this piece so it's nice and smooth. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and on the interfacing side, I'm marking my center front and my little dots. And honestly, I'm just going to use my marker to mark where my notches are because I've got so many layers there, I just don't feel like snipping into this. But I can, I can look for my little marker dots just as easily as looking for a little hash right now. You need to put those little hash marks on there because that is what you are gathering your front piece to. So if you don't, um, you're not going to know what to match up to. So we have all these gathering threads that have been just dangling this whole time going to match up my center front with the center front of the dress. Put it here. Center front to center front of dress. My outside edge. I'm going to match up. Now my little notch on this should match up to where my gathering threads start and they do which is fabulous. I'm just going to do a quick little wrap on those because I'm going to gather from the center out and going to match up. Now make sure your facing is also pinned in there so it won't go wandering. Pinning that. Ooh. That sounded like the ice is melting off the roof. At least I hope that's what it is. Okay, so now I have my little threads here. Actually, I need to open it up and get the right threads. So these two in the front are my center ones that I am going to be gathering off of. So, pulling those forward. Okay, so we can see this is the fabric that needs to get gathered between those notches. Going to go ahead and do that right now. And honestly, what I should have done um, is this very front piece. Very first thing I should have done was to serge around the whole thing. But once I put these gathering stitches on, I couldn't really serge the bottom until after they're gathered. And you can see it's already starting to fray a little bit. So that's my bad. Next time I will make sure that I... I and that's a, that's a basic thing, honestly, to, to finish off your edge first. Okay, so I got it all gathered up. I'm going to... Pin it down, do, gather the other side. All right, so I have it gathered up and sewn onto my midriff layer that had the interfacing on it. And actually, I don't know why I didn't think of this, I don't need to serge this piece because there's a liner. What you're gonna do is turn it this way. So you're looking at it from the inside, okay? And you're going to be sewing the top to this top so that after you make that stitch, this will fold straight down and all of that, all the raw edge will be encased and it'll be nice and pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it on here and make that stitch and uh, go to the next step. Okay. <clears throat> so what it wants you to do is stay stitched just between the notch and the side. I'm just going to use my little tape from the notch to the side, as I did in the other parts of the dress. And then sew it together. Actually, first, stay stitch it, or stay tape it. Serge the whole thing, all the pieces. Then sew this together. Then put in my gathering stitches. That's going to be the process. So I just wanted to show you an update. I've got all of the edges. This is the front skirt surged and I sewed the center front piece together. Now where I have my little notch. Where are you little notch? Well here. I'm just going to go this way. So from this point where my notch is to the edge is where I'm going to be either stay stitching or putting my stay tape. Between these two points, put the pin so you can see it easier. 
between these two points, I'm going to be running two rows of gathering stitches. Alrighty, so now I'm ready to start attaching the top to the bottom front. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my gathering threads up and out of the way here. And pinning the part that has the interfacing on it from the outside edge up to that point where the gathering threads start. on both sides. So that side is done. Now we're going to do it over here on this side. Get my gathering threads out of the way. Had a friend stop by, took a break, had a fabulous little cup of coffee and a chat and a visit. All refreshed and ready to get back into sewing. I love how sometimes just taking a break and walking away from something for a little while is all that you need to get motivated to finish that project. All right, so what else I'm going to mark is the center front here that I have marked on my interfacing. I need to mark that with the very center of this, which is, there's a seam allowance there, so that's easy to find. So I'm going to pin that together. That way I know that that center front stays. And now, oops, put this up above the stitching and below the stitching. So now I can go ahead, pull my gathering threads, and make it fit. And once I have that gathered, I'm going to sew along there, and I will show you what that looks like but this is going pretty well all right so I have it sewed on so basically it's up on top there's gathers where it's smooth on the bottom and then the center it's gathered in the bottom and then back up on top under the nether boob it's gathered so it's kind of nice um, now it's time for a little bit of hand stitching time so I'm gonna press the seam allowance up So now I'm just going to pin it. Basically, I smoothed it out up here. I'm pinning it down so I can see where my stitches are down here. And I'm putting my fold just above that. That way when I hand stitch it, I can be really confident that all of my stitches are going to be hidden in the seam allowance and not visible on the outside. Always wear your thimble, very important. And I'm just going to be taking little whip stitches along here, just catching a thread down a little few through that spun below. But like I said, I, um, I have it folded so that when I'm pulling threads through the bottom part, I can be really confident that nothing's going to show through because I have so many layers there. If you have it, this part here, folded too far down, then anything you pick up down here is going to be visible from the outside. So catch your threads above your stitch line, and you will be just fine. Alrighty, with that part of the dress done, I'm going to work on the tie for the back. So what you have is two long rectangular pieces. We're going to fold it in half lengthwise. Which one? I'm going to iron it first. Fold it in half lengthwise and sew all the way down and up. Here we go. All the way down and up one end. It's just so that I have that. Clip the corners and turn it right side out. Okay, so this is one of my turners. One side is rounder. One side is rounder. The other side is Pointier. So I put the rounded side in, pull all the fabric on, get it up to the end. Then you kind of put it in a corner and pinch it. It's going to go like that. There, pinch it so it looks like this. Then with that being held in place, 
you can just kind of slowly work it back. Open up the pinchers, pull out that little point so you have a thingy, and pull it out. Works like a charm. All right, so we've got the little tie straps done and I went ahead and surged across the raw edges just to make sure that they stayed ooh, there just to make sure that they stayed nice so the next part is we're going to sew these ties onto the back of the dress now there's two dots here I did not draw them on but I'm going to put a couple little pins where those two dots are on either side of the dress that is where the tie is going to go. So here's where my two dots are. The tie goes right right there and I'm going to repin just so it catches them. There. The side front to the side back on both sides. So this is what we're doing right now and then that. Oh I need to work on my centering. There. Woo! Nope. Yes. No. Up is down and down is up. Okay. So first this then this. Okay, so I've sewed the side seams and in the pattern it calls to press them open. But I did something different and I want to show you why. Um, basically, I did a almost like an understitching on it. And I pressed both seam allowances towards the back. I pressed them both towards the back and then ran a row of stitching about an eighth of an inch in um, all the way down from the armpit to the hem. So on the outside, David will focus for me. There. So from the outside, you can see a tiny row of stitching, but it's going to do two things. One, it's going to hold it flat, it's going to reinforce it. But also up here at the waist, there's a lot of layers. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of layers of fabric here. And um, to press it open, it was going to make too much bulk up on the front because you've got um, just a lot. You've just got a lot of layers there. So by pressing it back and top stitching it, it's actually going to make it sit a lot smoother against the body. And since this is where a tie is, um, you need it extra strong where that tie is so that when you pull it to tie it behind you, if there's any strain, it won't come off. So by having two layers of stitching there, it's twice as strong. So, other than that, I think that everything else is really nice. I'm going to go ahead, put the dress on my dress form to see how it looks, and get the sleeve out um, and get started working on that sleeve. All right, I did the first sleeve, starting out trying to follow their instructions, and I think there's a much better way. So I'm going to do the second sleeve my way. So I have already sewed the um, sleeve edges together, so I have one big circle. Now what they want you to do is baste a stitch 5 eighths, of the in 5 eighths inch in. And then, after you're done with everything, pull that basting stitch out. And at the same time, having to finagle with a whole lot of um, puckering because you're basically hemming a circle, which is always troublesome. I want to show you my way. My way is I'm going to basically ease in a curve into the whole thing. And the way I do this is right behind your presser foot, you're going to put your finger from your right hand that's basically going to accumulate and pucker a bunch of fabric. So if I can make this work, I'll show you. So I'm running it with the edge of my presser foot um, just along the edge of the fabric as a guide. And you just leave your finger there until you got a lot of fabric and you feel like you're ready to move it. When you move it, you'll see that the fabric that was behind here is a little bit gathered. It's like eased in. So then start up again. Okay, that didn't pucker as well, but 
keep going. See, as I push, it just puckers in. So I'm let go, and then I have my little pucker. All right, so I'm just gonna run that all the way around. And try not to get too far off here. Oops. This is a fabulous trick for easing in curved edges. Alrighty, so here is my sleeve. I'm just going to put part of it up here where you can see um, where there's a slight gather along this edge. So what I'm going to do, it wants a 5 8 inch hem, basically. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold it up at approximately 5 8 inch and just run my iron around it. Okay, so I have that pretty much 5 8 not going to get too fanatical about it. Then, because I have my gathering stitches there, I can turn that. This part here with all the seam allowance is the thickest, so I'm going to pin that down. Okay, so now it's a lot easier just to tuck that raw edge in and press it. When you're dealing with the curve, it's going to ease in really well because it's already gathered up on top, which is where your extra fullness is. If that makes any sense. So I'm going to go ahead and finish pinning all the way around, see what my dogs are barking at, and I'll be right back. Yeah, I don't have a clue what they're barking at. That's okay. They don't have a clue of what I'm talking about. And that's why we get along well. So you can see here, that's my pressed edge at about 5 eighths. I can turn it under because I have that stitching line there. It's giving me a lot of stability. So I can just turn it under nicely. Okay, so these are ironed, and you can see that they actually lay really nicely. So very pleased with that. I'm going to go ahead and run my serger around the inside of these sleeves, and then go ahead and set them into the armholes. Okay, so I'm going to set my sleeves in here, matching up the bottom seams with the side seams of the dress, the side of the sleeve. Pin that. And then I'm going to go straight up to the top and match the center dot that was on the sleeve to the shoulder seam. Okay, you can barely see it, but that's my center dot. Match up my notches. There's not a lot of extra. Uh, that you have to ease in or anything on these sleeves. They're pr cut pretty close to the actual armhole size. So that's easy enough. I'm going to get these pinned on the rest of the way around and give it a nice 5 8 inch seam. Since the sleeves are so full, we really don't have to worry about super reinforcing the bottom of the armhole because there's not going to be a lot of strain on it. So in that way, this is really nice. Okay, finally we are just about done. Now, all I have left to do is hem the bottom of this dress. The instructions say just do a quick little fold and fold narrow hem on the bottom. My legs are shorter than the standard model that they size dresses for, so I actually need about a two inch hem. Now, the way I'm going to do this, just to be a little extra, because sometimes it's fun to be extra, I'm going to use some Flexi Lace Seam Binding. 
Um, this is an old pack back when they were 45 cents. Gotta love it. I, uh, I have a... <laughs> I have a habit of buying old bulk packs of um, sewing supplies on eBay. A lot of times you can find huge amounts of things like where people are cleaning out someone's sewing room and they'll list, you know, 65 packs of seam binding for 20 bucks or something. So people like me scoop them up. But anyway, this lace, it's nice to have a pretty edge. Uh, what I'm gonna do is this, I don't know how we go. Okay, this is actually specifically made for him. So I don't know if you've ever used this type of lace or not. You can see there's two like little uh, alleyway on each side of the uh, lace. The first thing is with the right side of the dress up, we're going to sew basically putting about the center of the tape, the center of this lace, where the edge is, okay? I'm gonna make a straight stitch. Get this here. I'm gonna make a straight stitch down the center. Oh, come on. It wants to focus on the wrong thing. Make a straight stitch down this row right here. If this is the wrong side, my fabric's halfway. I'm sewing it on the right side, right there, all the way around. Now this is slightly stretchable, and I'm gonna use that to my advantage as I sew it. I'm gonna pull it a little bit, and that way it's going to help me absorb some of that curve in the bottom of the uh, hemline, so that when I fold it up for my two inch hem, it should smooth out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have my lace sewed on all the way around, and you can kind of see from this side that there's a little bit of a pucker built in. That's because as I sewed the lace, I stretched it a bit, which is what I wanted. That was intentional because there's a slight curve to this hem, and by stretching it and building that pucker into it, this is kind of exaggerated here, but as There. As I fold it up, it's going to form it into that nice curve. And honestly, it's kind of cute. I, perp I have a navy one, but I wanted a little bit of a contrast because it's kind of fun. The rest of this dress is very serious. It's a very serious dress, but this, that's fun. So what I need is a two inch hem. So I'm going to go ahead and take this to my ironing board and press that hem in, put some pins into it. Okay, I've got it pinned on, and I think it's going to work out really nicely. I've got the hem pressed. I am going to go ahead and machine stitch this on. It'll just be one row of stitching, but the way that this is uh, gathering in for me, I think it'll actually lay nicely, so I'm not too worried about that. The place that you stitch this is... Um, on this upper row here, if I can see it right here, there's a top uh, stripe, and sew in the middle of that stripe. I just want to give you a quick peek of how darn cute this dress turned out. So, the side, and here's the front. Honestly, it's kind of a vintagey look in the front. It's, um, I like that. I like that. The way that it tucks in, it's very flattering. And uh, the, I think the fabric using 100% linen is going to be fabulous. And with the sleeves, nothing's going to bind on your arm with those sleeves. So I can't wait to try it on. I just wanted to give you a couple close-ups of the detail. It's beautiful out, so that's why I'm sitting on the porch. I love this dress. I uh, 
I think it's super comfy. Let's see, I have a little gap issue, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I just need to adjust. Okay. But it's super comfy. Um, and the way that it cinches in at the belt makes you feel like it's not a moo moo type dress. It makes you feel like it's it's somewhat fitted and flattering, and I love that. And it was straightforward and uh, pretty doable to put together. It's not the super easiest, but it's definitely not as tricky as some that I've dealt with. So, um, yeah, it's a thumbs up. I like this pattern. Sorry, my cat's rubbing on the tripod. Um, and I think I will make another one. And if, uh, if this linen is any indication, um, a nice lightweight woven does really, really well. So I really appreciate you sticking with me until the end of this. And in the middle of this, we had a snowstorm and now it's a beautiful spring day. So I am ready to wear my spring dress. <laughs> Thanks, bye.